Welcome to Cologne, Germany, the city honoring a decade of hosting the world's biggest games convention, Gamescom. Over 355,000 visitors ranging from fans, media, influencers and developers from all across the globe gather to showcase and experience the latest hardware, titles, services and trends that the video game industry has to offer. Furthermore, Gamescom offers different activations during the week, like concerts and side events, which in total brings half a million gaming fans to the city. This is a week of celebration towards the admiration of video games, showing that this culture is more than gaming. It's a way of living, it teaches, it brings people together. This is Gamescom 2018. What presents culture better than local food? And for Germans, you might think we eat Schweinsbraten every day. As Bavarians, I would say, yeah, we maybe do. But in Cologne, we have this one specific local dish called Kölsch Kaviar, which means caviar of Cologne. So it's not fish eggs. It's actually blood sausage. It's bread. It's mustard. It comes with butter. And it's very delicious and also very cheap. And this is Cologne. So behind me you see the Cathedral of Cologne, which goes back to the medieval times and attracts 20,000 people a day. But besides this awesome Gothic architecture, I have a second favorite spot I want to show you. So this bridge is actually not far away from the Cathedral of Cologne and you might wonder why are there so many locks here? So it has become a local tradition that if you want to express your love for someone, you get a lock, you get your names engraved, you put it on the fence and it's sealed forever. And because we love you guys so much, I have made a lock as well. And what I'm going to do is find a spot and seal our love forever as well. I hope you enjoyed this brief tour through the city that hosts hundreds of thousands of gamers every year at Gamescom. And now it's time to kick up some brand new games and announcements. It's time for Inside Xbox. again and we are live from the Xbox booth right here in wonderful Cologne, Germany. Now today select industry insiders will be hitting the floor but tomorrow thousands of fans and gamers will flood through this massive show floor. You can't imagine just last year we had over 300 and 50,000 fans. It is just a massive show. It's humongous. No. Uh, and, and because it's humongous, we thought it was only right that we kick it off with an epic episode of Inside Xbox. Uh -huh. So stick around for a stack of exclusive Xbox news, interviews, and never before seen stuff that's going to blow your mind. I know, Internet, you're at it. You're trying to figure it out. You don't <laughs> have to wait long. Now, if you're watching on Mixer, we've got a mix pot all ready for you with digital items for Forza and Sea of Thieves. If you're not on a mixer, it's not too late. Tune in and make sure you're signed in with your Microsoft account to get some free, free stuff. We like free stuff. And to bring you all of this goodness, we have around today a platter of international <laughs> hosts to serve you today. Myself, Larry Herb, Xbox Live's Major Nelson, Graham Boyd, AC Bongos. We have Julia Hardy, Ricari Austin, Benny Perkin, Jeff Rubinstein, and Maxi Graf. Germany's own Maxi Graf, the hometown hero. Yeah, that was a great uh, guide to Cologne there. Did you see the little lock? What, what a great floor, idea. Man. So romantic. All right, let's jump right into it with today's first exclusive reveal. That's what we've been doing before. Front on me. Take away. Quiet now. Run down. Oh, no, no, there'll be a lady. Right, well, he's behind you. He's right behind you. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Take Armor. out before we take Right, got it. She's down. They haven't seen us. There's another team coming in. In the bushes. In the bushes. All right, you got him. He's burning. He's burning. Careful. He's yeah. He's dead. All right, you got him. You got him. That one's a short I'm going to break the sun of it. Probably going to take shot. Yeah, take a shotgun. Uh, Let's go. Spider nighttime. Bring bringing dynamite? I'm bringing the machete. All the players will just Someone spooked the birds. <laughs> Coming from the flare, from the flare. I'm gonna try to take this guy out. Fast, fast, fast. I, 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 I. And then I think like we should take a go and see what happens over there. The second clue coming up. See if you can find it in darkness. Uh, I found the clue in the next room. Behind, what's behind? Got the clue. All right, Puerto Rico it is. 
There he is. They can see us now on the map, watch out. Okay, I got the bounty. Alright, they are all over us. Get out of here. One play inside here. He's burning, he's burning. He's coming out to you. Yep. Good. Now. Shoot him, shoot him. <laughs> right around the corner. We got two around the corner. Dudes there. His partner's got to be around here somewhere. I got him. Nice shot. Oh, they're behind the they close. Oh, God. There's two player behind me. Move, move. Get the exit. Oh. How many kills you got? I think I shot two. I think I shot two. Achieved with CryEngine. Hello and herzlich willkommen. A very warm welcome to our first guests, Fati and Magnus from the German studio Crytek. Nice to have you guys here. Are you nice are you to good? be here. Um, so what are you guys here to announce today? Well, we are happy to be here today to announce that Han Cholan will be coming to Xbox Game Preview. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, the trailer was Beautiful, some beautiful water features there. Do a nice bit of moonlight. It looks very sexy. Thank you. Yeah, very we saw actually so. a lot of things in the trailer. We saw PVE, we saw PVP, oh, we yeah. saw the awesome Gothic Western setting. So for the people who are not like comfortable, uh, not know of Hunt Shoulder, what is it all about? What Hunt is about? Yeah. So uh, Hunt is basically a uh, competitive uh, first-person monster hunting game. So what that means is uh, you are a bounty hunter and you kill monsters for gold. So the whole setup is like you have a map, it's about 1K, 1K map. It's a sandbox map, you can go wherever you want. All right. You can choose your play style and say, somewhere there, there's a monster on the loose. So the game is kind of, uh, uh, it's a, it follows like three phases, right? First off, you narrow down the boss's location. Okay. All the teams is trying to get there first. Yeah, right? okay. So you look, you do that by finding clues. You find clues because you have a darkness within you. Okay. In our game, there's no good guys. Everybody's greedy. <laughs> like you think for I yourself, mean, yeah, I was everybody say. badass, man. <laughs> Don't trust the thief, right? <laughs> so so uh, you're a little bit of an evil yourself. Now, when the monsters break through into our realm, they leave a bit of uh, rifts in the world. Ah, okay. So when you find them, you use your power, and you make a connection to the boss. And when you do, uh, the region shrinks. It's almost like in uh, PUBG, except we have to get a lot further. Okay, right? in yeah. Those, uh, survival games, right? So you need, to, you need to do it a few times, and then you look into where, uh, obviously, there's a bunch of AI in the way. We have a challenging AI cast. They challenge you differently. You have a lot of tools and gears to deal with them differently, right? Yeah. If I'm really loud and I shoot everything I see, everybody in the map Everybody's hears me. Now. So, I mean, once, once you get to the boss, though, what there's a kind of next phase you were telling us about. Sorry? Once you get to the boss and once you've defeated the boss, what, what happens after that? Because it's not over when that happens, yeah, right? Question. Okay, so basically, uh, the goal is to kill the boss. Yeah. Now, uh, to get to the token, to the prize, which you're going to sell back for money, you get to banish them to hell. Mm -hmm. That's off a little timer, so the other guys get to get there also. And that's what we call the showdown. Everybody collapses, right? Okay. Or there's also like a, in our game, you can express yourself in a lot of ways. So you can have some people go out and wait outside for some guy to take it and run and he attack him. Yeah. So the person who takes up the bounty, uh, we call it uh, the hunter becomes the hunter at that oh, point. Right. That's like a big sweep, uh, uh, switch in the game, in the gameplay. The whole gameplay changes. Uh, and honestly, like we're having like a lot of gears and gadgets for the players to play with, and stop the other guys from running, or you can eject yourself so you can run faster. Oh, okay, there's I mean, all kinds of stuff, right? We could see obviously in the trailer there's an awful lot of chat that's going on, which means you know there's a lot of tactics happening on yes. the fly, right? Yes, it's a lot of tactics. It is a little bit to learn, but not too much. Okay. Uh, once you play a game or two, you kind of learn the basics of it. Uh, and also, if you think like you're in a bad spot, you also have the option to leave. Now, okay. certain things you have done have earned you certain things. Yeah. So uh, you can upgrade your characters later, right? Okay. So we have something called, like our main game is, is high-tension gameplay. 
We want to maximize this experience to be the most high tense gameplay experience you can have. Got it. Right? Excellent. What, what made you guys like decide to go for the Xbox game preview? So, uh, I mean, well, it's kind of simple. Like uh, uh, in our game, we started very raw. We started very skeleton-like. And uh, uh, I mean, entire uh, everybody in the team wants to work with the audience, yeah, and the audience yeah. can test it better than we can, and they can come up with better stuff than we can. And we do a long list of their opinions. We prioritize them. And that's where a lot of the good ideas come from. Right? Yeah. And we nice. try to implement them there. For example, like if something is a bit. Uh, um, diffuse. Then we ask them what they think, and then we try to make it better. Okay. And that's the, honestly the most rewarding thing is to work with them. Okay, so you guys well, we know what to do, right? Give feedback to the game once you can put yes. your hands so on it. So we use Absolutely. feedback that is given through our platform. Yeah. On the other hand, we use data of the players, right, to balance the game, to see what they like, how they engage with the game, and actually the feedback and the data helps us to validate the current scope of the game. It's but a also weird to decide what we will build in the future, right? And that's the community <laughs> moment that Xbox Game Preview is giving I know, us that, right, right. giving yeah. us data as well as feedback from users. And we're excited actually to see how Xbox gamers are going to feel about our game. On Oh, yeah. their take I'm, is on it. I'm excited. Now that I've seen that, I'm very, very excited. But but I can, thank I, you. I can't stress uh, the stick in the ground for our game. It's not just shooting monsters, right? Yeah. Uh, the stick in the ground is high tension. So we have a high risk, high reward aspect. So when you're walking in in our world, the entire world is made he's to look He's taking up more time than he should, is this guy. I uh, know, that's what they're trying to If I shoot it, other people yeah. might hear it. If somebody's shooting at me, I can't see it really. And, if, and uh, uh, also high tension comes from uh, whatever I bring in, whatever I bring in uh, will help me. If you kill me, I lose it all and I'm gone. Permadeath yeah. it is, death, I can't right. wait for it. It's, right? It looks absolutely amazing. Well, thank you so much to Matthew and Magnus from Crytek. And now Larry's looking yeah, that's what Julie was trying to do for him, like, No doubt sure. probably looking to see a chicken dinner behind closed doors. <laughs> Watch yourself down there. I think the blue zone is closing in. Julia, don't worry, I'll be quick about it. A few weeks ago, I went to South Korea to meet with the development team behind Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and walked away with brand new details on the upcoming 1.0 full product release for PUBG. And now it's time to share those exclusive no details. No, it's coming soon then. Take a look. Oh, sweet. Then we get war mode and everything. Whoa. That new map. Can't wait for the Vietnam looking one, but that one looks cool. Hi, it's Larry here of Xbox Live's Major Nelson. For the past eight months, the Xbox Game Preview program has embraced a game near and dear to my long even sitting there but for let's a be man. honest, there's been some unpredictability. <laughs> some ups and some downs. We've celebrated incredible victories, and we've had some brutal defeats. We've also had some incredible spontaneous moments that bring this game to life. I am, of course, talking about Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Everywhere I look, the team is focused. They're hard at work on all facets of PUBG, pouring over community feedback, <coughs> testing new builds, <coughs> creating brand new content. And before I interrupt that flow, I thought I'd take a minute to poke around the studio and Maybe enjoy a cappuccino. Make off with a little swag, including a custom level three helmet. Now only available <laughs> in supply crates, mind you. And you had to know the slogan for the cafeteria was going to be on point. And how about that? Perfect for a little jet lag recovery. <laughs> but I didn't come all this way to PUBG Corporation in Seoul, South Korea, just to poke around the studio. I wanted to know about the journey. From a little-known battle royale experiment a year and a half ago to global phenomenon, and then on to Xbox Game Preview, and just around the corner, 1.0 for Xbox One. It's been an incredible journey for the team and for the fans. And where better? And to I want that fucking than the very beginning. That Xbox Dev Kit that they have. <laughs> that was nerve-wracking. Yeah, like really, I mean we. I was always hesitant about going into early access just because it leads to questions and there's been some games that haven't really done well. So 
when we had our beta beforehand, we really wanted to lock down the, the quality of the build. So at least the build we were releasing was pretty good. And that final week of the beta, I was watching some streamers play and they were having a good time. There was no major bugs. It all seemed to be pretty stable. So at that stage, I got a little bit excited. I was like, OK, this looks like we could have a good launch. And we did. 저희가 기대했던 거에 몇 배가 되게 되니까 이 서버가 버티질 못하는 거예요. 처음 오픈할 때 두려움, 뭐 기대, 뭐 이런 섞여 있는 감정이었던 것 같아요. I'm like almost speechless just even thinking about that moment. After its incredible success on PC, the team announced plans for PUBG on Xbox One at E3 2017. Readying the game for a platform the team had never <coughs> worked on before was audacious and a massive challenge. 일단은 Xbox로 가져오는 것에 대한 결정 자체도 어려워. You know, bringing a a massive open world with 100 player PVP to to Xbox is not something that's really been done before. So that alone was a challenge. 10프레임 정도밖에 나오질 않았었어요. 그러다가 그, 그런 데다가 그 상황에서 사람들이 옷을 갈아입는지 특정 행동 <웃음> When we try to have the game that runs on PC into Xbox, um, it was pretty difficult having it run smoothly. In order to enable um, their development schedule, we applied advanced technical group resources from within Xbox to help with things like user research and usability, as well as optimizing art code and providing some controller feedback to enable the transition from mouse and keyboard, which is very complicated, over to controller. You know, the upside is that we're currently, you know, north of 18 patches. The downside is that we're currently north of 18 patches, but we've seen great improvement overall. You know, everything from, from performance to in-law controls to the addition of Miramar, it's been a very special ride. Like, you can look back um, every couple of weeks and see a meaningful improvement that's occurred in the game. And it's that's impactful when you see that in just short, you know, in, in a relatively short amount of time, the drastic improvement that this game has made. After launch on the game preview, PUBG on Xbox One was in the hands of two equally passionate teams, the developers and the fans. I've always wanted to work for a team that builds a product by listening to their customer base, and it is what we have done from day one. I try to have every wording of the community Literally, like even if it's swearing words, I just send it straight away. 네, 어떤 피드백이나 뭐 그것이 사랑이 됐던 질책이 됐던 간에 굉장히 가깝게 경험한 어떤 그런 개발자로서의 경험. 디테일한 걸 듣기를 원하시고 또 그를 통해서 좀 이해하고 싶어 하시는 것 같아요. 왜안 되는지. 좋은 피드백, 나쁜 피드백, 중립적인 피드백, 뭐 되게 좋은 의견들 이런 걸다 수집해서 리포트를 수집해서 보거든요. So we know what, um, if we're on the right path and it has accelerated our development. 긍정적인 영향을 끼치죠. 네. 유저 피드백을 확인하고 그들의 의견을 듣는 것 자체는 거의 온라인 게임에서 필수적인 요소 같아요. 네. Like why wouldn't you want to build something that your customers want to see? It's so rewarding when you see players go, oh, I provided that feedback, I wanted that, I wanted to see that feature in PUBG, and now they worked uh, to implement that in the game. That's really cool. And we've got a great roadmap that continues to deliver against um, our promise of, of a 1.0 experience. Rapidly iterating PUBG and Xbox game preview with the fans is all leading to its 1.0 full product release on September 4th. Of course, the launch for 1.0 is just another different beginning. You know, it doesn't mean development stops. You know, it means that we sort of, uh, we consider the game more or less feature complete. The, 저희, 저희 게임 자체가, 배틀그라운드라는 게임 자체가 온라인 게임이기 때문에 뭐 이걸로 끝나는 건 아니고 계속적으로 업그레이드가 되어 갈 텐데 하여튼 요 단계를 거치면서 어쨌든 그래도 기본은 됐다. 는 PC의 콘텐츠들이 가능한 가장 빠른 시간 내에 엑스박스 유저분들도 즐길 수 있도록 저희가 노력을 많이 하겠습니다. We're really looking forward to things like custom matches and Sandhawk, all creating this 
you know, larger PUBG experience that we feel really delivers against the promise that was made in December. In addition to a significantly improved overall experience for 1.0, new and existing players can look forward to playing the Sandhawk map, the ability to configure custom matches, including war mode, and of course, achievements, which will carry over from the Xbox game preview period. It's gonna feel like a different game if you wanna compare it to December and 1.0. The dedication of the PUBG team is on display everywhere in the studio. But sometimes you need to just play. You have to remind yourself of what you're working so hard for. That's why every Friday, the team takes part in what they term simply Play Day. Whether they're testing a new map, set of features, or brand new content on Xbox, PC, or mobile, you can feel the team shake off the stresses of development and settle in for some good, old-fashioned, winner-winner chicken dinner competition. Whether it's the art team, console team, testers, or human resources, the battle royale begins. Soon, defeated teammates are gathering around their favorite dev, rooting them on. Screams, laughter, joy, and catastrophe. It's all there. You know, I'm thinking of taking this play day thing back home to Xbox. It's been a tremendous pleasure to see the team and see the passion for the game and dedication to its community on full display. For the last six months, PUBG has been my go-to respite after a long day. I've played it more than any other game. It's about the moments, indelible memories that you brag or commiserate about with your friends. Sometimes it's the thrill of securing a hard fought supply crate or ambushing some poor soul who thinks they found safety from a rival squad. It could be the raw tension and dread that spring from something as mundane as footsteps crunching the gravel outside or a door opening in a building I was sure I cleared. Or maybe it's the hilarity of a motorcycle biting it in a burst of high-speed overconfidence. Or, more rarely in my case than I'd like to admit, it is the sheer joyous adrenaline of victory earned in the crucible of the final blue zone against a desperate enemy eager for their own taste of chicken dinner. Few things in gaming taste sweeter. The allure of PUBG is in its unpredictability. Every drop is a fresh new adventure. And so whether falling gently with my parachute or falling gently into a quick nap with the hardworking team at PUBG, I'm confident I'm in great hands and I can only dream of one thing. Brilliant insight into Player Unknown Battlegrounds and the upcoming 1.0 release on September the 4th. Now, as a reminder, the PUBG 1.0 release will include all the enhancements the team has made along the way, plus Sanook, custom games, and war mode, which will add a deathmatch approach to Battle Royale, where the match will take place in a static zone and it'll include respawns. And that is not all the PUBG goodness we have. Oh no, I am here with Bree White to talk about some brand new Xbox controllers, starting with this drop dead gorgeous special edition PUBG controller. How are you doing, Bree? Great. Welcome to Gamescom. This is nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah. Now, Bree and I work on Xbox controllers all the time at Xbox EQ, don't we? That's but right. it's the first time we've been on a show together. Well, this is fun, and thank you for bringing this. Um, tell us about this amazing controller. So this is the Xbox Wireless Controller, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, limited edition. It's available for pre-order today and will be shipping worldwide in October. Fantastic, so look at this, exclusive for Inside Xbox, the first time in the world anyone's seeing this. And the best thing is you can pre-order it right now. But, you know, tell us about all the details on here, Bree, because this is a beautiful controller. Okay, in the back you'll see a digital camo. Mm -hmm. On the left thumbstick, you've got a blue circle. Right, so that's like the blue zone closing in on your on your thumb. Exactly. Nice. And then on the right thumbstick, you've got a sight scope. Right. On the back, there's the PUBG logo. Mm -hmm. 
And then here on the right trigger is an X, which is iconic of where the concept of Battle Royale started. Okay, so that's like you Xing out all your competitors in a Battle Royale match, right? Right. Good. And then for the first time ever, mm -hmm. we've put grips on our triggers. Nice, yeah, this is really cool. So this is the first time we've had these on a Xbox controller before. Trigger grips on the top of the right trigger and left trigger. So when your fingers are getting sweaty, when you're getting right down to that chicken dinner, you get a little bit of extra grip on there, right? It's really cool. And I love the uh, silver effect on the D-pad here. It's got kind of a bit of a rugged approach there, right? Looks great. Thank you, Bree. That's awesome. Now, I hear you've been cooking up something else in Xbox Design Lab, yeah? That's right. Let's take a look. And I had my chance to design a couple of my own controllers with the new Xbox Design Lab options. You can see them here. This is my Fall 2018 capsule collection. This one matches my jacket very nicely. I think you'll agree. How about that? What do you think, Bree? What do you think of my designs? Yeah, they're beautiful. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Talk us through the new options. So two years ago, we launched Xbox Design Lab, mm -hmm. a product where you can customize your very own Xbox wireless controller. Last year, we brought you metallic finishes, rubberized grips, and a few new colors, right. as well as shipping to over 20 European countries. This year, I'm excited to share that we have five new camouflage options and five new shadow options. All right, yeah, and we can have a closer look at them here as well. So this is the new desert camo option, right? First time we've had desert camo on an Xbox controller? Exactly. There you go. So I put some metallic D-pad, red metallic triggers on there. I've got the rubberized grips on the back here, if you can see that, because I love my rubberized grips. Uh, yeah, and it looks awesome. Of course, I've got my engraving on here as well. Yeah, your gamer tag. the engraving. Yeah, AC Bong's on there, so no one else can use it. And here's the shadow. So why did we bring shadow options to Xbox Design Lab? Uh, we found fans really love the matte black that fades to a bright metallic, and mm -hmm. so we added these five colors so that people can customize the rest of their controller however they want. Absolutely, and I've kept mine pretty subtle, kind of kept the same color scheme. Got the nice blue metallic trigger buttons. But of course, with Xbox Design Lab, you can do whatever you want. You can go as wild as you want, and I'm sure we'll see some amazing designs. Hi, Bree. Thank you very much, and thank you for the kind words about my designs. Yeah, one more thing. If mm -hmm. you want to order one or design one today, you can go to xbox.com slash Xbox Design Lab. And don't we have a time-limited exclusive as well with the Shadow oh. series? Yes, there is a silver shadow controller just like this that is available just now through September 30th. All right, okay, so check that out on Xbox Design Lab, those new shadow and camo options. And now, for something completely different, Benny's going to take us on a journey back in time. Thanks, Graham. We're not actually time traveling, but the new info we're set to debut will make you feel like you're back in some mid-century action. DICE, the developer of Battlefield 5, has promised that after the game releases on October 19th, the journey will keep evolving in a post-launch experience called Tides of War. This is our first chance to see what that means and how it ties into your personalized, customized journey, which is all tied together by your company. Now, I would just keep rambling on about this, and I'd love to, but I think this will explain it much better than I can. Take a look. In Battlefield 5, you have more ways than ever to turn the battlefield to your advantage. It all starts with your company, 
your personalized unit of soldiers, weapons, and vehicles. More than ever, playing as a squad is key to success in Battlefield 5, so make sure to collect all the tools and gear you need to win the battle. We are bringing more depth to our known classes with the introduction of combat roles. The recon can specialize in long-range shooting, spotting, or stealth. The assaults become versatile in how they engage the enemy. The medics have more ways to keep their squad alive, and the support can now provide backup with new attrition and fortification systems. For the first time in Battlefield, each combat role has a unique loadout and unique abilities, and over time, you will get access to more combat roles. Define how your weapon feels and performs on the battlefield. As you play and progress, you'll unlock tactical choices that affect how your weapons and vehicles look and perform. Complete daily orders or take on special assignments to equip your company with new gear, weapons and vehicles. As your company progresses, you will earn new items to visually personalize your company. You can customize your soldiers from top to bottom. Weapons can be personalized too. Now you get to decide how they look and play. Your company's look is up to you. Highlight your gameplay achievements from your journey through World War II, or be completely creative by designing a unique look. With Tides of War, you'll embark through humanity's greatest conflict, giving more gear to grow your company. Whether it's how you choose to look or how you choose to play, in Battlefield 5, you'll never be the same. The sheer breadth of customization in Battle 5 is staggering, but we're not quite done with the reveals, and what better way to celebrate Battlefield 5 than with not one, not two, but three different bundles. First, we have the Xbox One S and Xbox One X, one terabyte Battlefield 5 bundles, which will include a code for Battlefield 5 Deluxe Edition, a one month trial of Xbox Game Pass, and 14 day Xbox Live Gold trial. And finally, feast your eyes on this. The Xbox One X 1TB Gold Rush Special Edition Battlefield 5 Bundle. As you can see, it features a unique dark grey gold design where the gold record like re relates to heroism and the like, bullet casings and artillery shells with the grey representing the weapons in Battlefield 5. It will also include a matching grey controller which looks awesome and then will include a code for the Battlefield 5 Deluxe Edition plus a code for Battlefield 1943 as a bonus. It will also include a one month Xbox Game Pass trial, 14 day Xbox Live Gold trial and one month of EA Access. Experience the tides of war with your company starting on October 11th for EA Access members, October 16th for Battlefield 5 Deluxe Edition Early Enlister Access, and October 19th for the Battlefield 5 Standard Edition. Now over to Jeff and Ricari, who will do their best to survive the State of Decay 2 interview. That's right, there is a new major add-on for State of Decay 2, the Daybreak Pack, and let me tell you when it arrives, September 12th. And now, Ricari and I, nice shirt. Thank Ricari, you. I that's, appreciate that. Yeah, you know, really, we should have coordinated, but I think it ended no, up all right. No, you have great taste. Uh, and we have Wonder Russell from Undead Labs. Thanks so much for joining us to talk about this big State of Decay 2 news. Sure is. Well, first of all, the big news is, this is her second show. Yeah. Wonder is now a two-time yeah. guest, and All you've right. done Redmond and International, so hey, high five I'm for very that. excited. We'll We're a blazer after three shows. <laughs> Can't wait for my pin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, why don't you tell us about the Daybreak Pack? Yeah, Daybreak Pack, entirely new mode for State of Decay 2. It's very exciting. Uh, there's also a ton of unlockables for your community. You play as a really well-equipped elite Red Talon soldier. So you drop in and your whole goal is to defend a Red Talon tech through waves of zombies that get increasingly harder. So we're seeing this now. This is brand new footage from Gamescom. There's a demo That's that right. folks are playing right now behind us. And what you can see is like 
it's, there's quite a bit different, especially your location. Yes, it's a new map. Uh, you don't use your own community, so you're not going to lose any precious survivors. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I yes. have to ask, since <laughs> my likeness appears in the game, you said a Red Talon soldier, not your own community? Not your own community. <sighs> I know. Right. Maybe if you keep leveling up those fighting skills. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. But it, it's, it's good because it's a completely different type of thing. So, yes. so how does Daybreak work? Daybreak works, so you spawn in as a Red Talon soldier. So there is permadeath, but if you die, you'll respawn as a new soldier in about 13 seconds. And they don't look like you, so you don't have to worry about it. Great, yeah. great. Yeah, Super I can those characters. Yes. You have the best gear, and you are defending a fortified position. It's kind of like siege defense mode, uh, protecting the technician who's working on an uplink to the Clio satellite system. So Clio is something we introduced in year one survival edition. Mm -hmm. So she controls a, a drone and satellite network. She's helping you with the fight. She's calling in airstrikes and leaving drops for you in the field. Now you mentioned gear. Is it safe for me to assume that there are new weapons and equipment? Absolutely. All new weapons, great gear, including unlockables for your community. Uh, nine new ranged weapons, six new melee weapons, six new consumables, different kinds of explosives, mines you can trigger, really going to help you out. There's so much stuff. i got to ask, do you have a favorite? Do I have a favorite? I, there is an axe that I love. And it takes a lot of stamina, but you just swing that and you feel like a badass. It's awesome. So seeing some of this B-roll or some of this footage here, which we just saw, uh, we saw what looked like a new freak. That's right. So this is something that the fans have been speculating might exist, and we're really excited to bring it to Daybreak, the Blood Plague Juggernaut. All right, so the Juggernaut already, like, the cause of probably worldwide Mayhem, millions many of deaths. ripped apart. No, yeah. I run. Yeah. I run. I hear that. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm out of there. So He's even tougher than the regular Juggernaut. And... He's <laughs> infected with blood plague. So you absolutely can die, even though the whole experience, if you were to survive all seven waves, they get increasingly harder and longer. But if you were to survive, it's maybe about a 45 minute experience. You can die of blood plague in that time. Easy. So let's talk about um, the connection between Daybreak and your community. So right. there, there's some really great rewards for playing Daybreak. Absolutely. Yeah, so the more waves you survive, the longer you play, the more prestige you earn, which is going to be the in-game currency for unlocking those in your base game. So you can call in uh, Red Talon Bunks and Barracks, uh, Red Talon Watchtower that gives you more passive defense than a regular Watchtower, Crafting Station. You can even recruit one of the Red Talon Elite Soldiers to come into your community. They have their own set of skills that are just maxed out. They can even become a leader, and not just a warlord, which I think is really cool. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. That's yeah. September 12th, yeah? You're just, yeah, it is. And yeah. uh, I th just think you're excited that you can play and not worry about but not you worry know, about using if I'm somebody who looks like you. Yeah, and up to, and it's co-op as well, drop in, drop up, uh, up to four players. And uh, and if you you can also play it uh, single player, and you'll have two NPCs to go with you, which really helps. That's awesome. <laughs> it does. We played it, and it's a, a lot of fun, and it's I can't really wait fun. to be able to spend those points on some cool new clue yes, here in my really main game. Cool. All right, cool. Thank you, Wonder, for, uh, yeah. for joining Thanks us here. And we'll be playing on September 12th. Up next, Graham's going to give us the scoop on Sea of Thieves. So sharpen your blade and shiver oh, me. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Yo, what? Stop. Why? <laughs> why do you got to do that? Why are you going to tell me how I can see a thief? I just, you know, they hate that. I hate that. So why do that? Because it sounds like Graham and I want to be like You know Live Graham. your life. No, live your life. <laughs> All right, well, whatever. Take it away, Graham. I think you're quite right, Jeff. Don't let Rikari tell you what to do. Hey, everyone, I'm here with Joe Neat, executive producer at Rare. Joe, how are you, mate? I'm very, very well indeed, Jeff. Yes. Welcome back to Gamescom. It's one of my favourite shows. All the fans, the best, meeting people, it's like it's amazing. The energy is incredible and the scale, right? It's so huge. Do you know what? It's funny you say that. It's been nice just hanging out with you for the last 15 minutes yeah. because there's so many Sea of Thieves fans have just come up to you and, and wanted to talk about the game. Oh, it's, it's awesome. It's isn't great, it? isn't it? Asking when we're putting fishing in, yeah, <laughs> like, that seems to be the common question. But, uh, so, yeah. what's the answer? <laughs> Like, we hear the feedback. <laughs> we hear the feedback. <laughs> All right, good. So, Cursed Sales has been out for about three, four weeks now? Uh, three weeks, yeah, yeah. How's the community has been responding to that? Really great. Like, introducing skeleton ships into the world like we did with this kind of cool campaign with their different battles each week and this, like, side quest you can do as well, like, about the kind of background of how these came into the world. Right. We love introducing new content in that way to Sea of Thieves. And so, it's been great to kind of see how players have been getting on with this, the creative use of mechanics with the, with the skeleton ships and yeah. stuff um, so yeah loads of great feedback and but also stuff that we've learned right like people going 
you know, we put a lot of um, different commendations and things you could achieve, like reasons to replay into, into the game. Yeah. Uh, but And we set them at different times and different weeks. And for some of our players, that was a little bit too much. And so it's like, OK, like for the next, for Sacred Shores campaign, we kind of dial in that back so that it's a bit more relaxed, a bit more chill. You've got more time and opportunity to go right. and do it and kind of take part in that campaign. So, yeah, we're always learning. So when you go from, like, uh, you know, Curse of Sales to Forsaken Shores to whatever you've got lined yeah. up in the future, what are you learning about player behavior in each of those updates? Like, with Curse of Sales, right, you've got alliances, you've got the skelly ships. What kind of behavior have you seen? That, that... Um, the alliances stuff has been amazing to see how that has influenced player behavior and, and just ch changed, like, the interaction with people out in the seas. Because I, I play Sea of Thieves as a fan, right? Like, you know, I've got the best job in the world. Like, I get paid to be a fan of my, the game I work on. It's awesome. Um, but so I was playing at the weekend, and whenever I go in now, I always put the alliance flag on. So, if, like, anybody that sees me sees that shape of the flag. Right. And, like, I, so I'm hoping that they're going to not be aggressive towards me. And, and a lot of the time, you know, you'll see someone will join your alliance or they'll shout to you over the speaking trumpet. So nice. it's really great to be able to signal your intent from distance and, and to, uh, just those, those human interactions and behaviors. It's so unique to what our game is, I think. All right, so Forsaken Shores is literally on the horizon. Yes. What have you got coming up for us soon? Uh, yeah, so Forsaken Shores, uh, loads of stuff, right? So, um, <laughs> uh, like, I think we've got some, hopefully we've got some footage that we're going to be showing off uh, around this, around the world, right? And so um, it's a volcanic world, mm -hmm. and it's much more perilous than anything, any other part of the world that we've put in. So you're still going to start in the parts of the world you currently start in, and you have to make a choice to venture to, to the Devil's Roar, which is the name of right. this area. Right, and um, the, the volcanoes like some sometimes they're going to be kind of dormant, they're not going to be going off, and mm -hmm. so but then you might get a little bit of tremors, a little bit of earthquake that gives you a signal that maybe something's not right on the island and might lead you to now want to kind of maybe hide in a cave or get off the island and back to your boat and wait and see. Um, it depends kind of what circumstances you're in, what stuff, like how much loot you've got and everything. But yeah. then if it does kick off, you've got like uh, geysers which will fly you up into the air if you're like running across the island, you can get pinged up into the air. Um, you've got rocks raining down, mm -hmm. the, the water gets superheated around the islands too. So it becomes, you, like if you swim through it, you're gonna, you're basically, you're gonna get cooked alive, right? Nice. And, so, um, <laughs> and so that's why the rowboat is coming yes. in alongside for safe shores, which is you're going to find these in the world emergently, and you can then take it back to your boat and like dock it to your boat and take it with you. Um, but like when that water superheated, you can use the rowboat to kind of get through it, and um, uh, you can fill it up with loot. And one of my favourite images, actually, from um, so there was a video someone put together speculating about what they could do with this, and they just filled it with uh, snakes and explosive barrels, like the rowboat. And like you can just imagine, just push that off, sailing to another ship, like good luck. <laughs> but um, I'm really looking forward to that creativity that players do with this and so one other thing that's really cool that we're bringing in with um, the Forsaken Shores mm. uh, is a new uh, quest for the merchants okay. called Cargo Runs so this is where you're gonna you're, like you can take a cargo run on uh, you'll kind of get a, a, like a, an ask from an NPC that will go hey I want you to deliver this stuff to, to this place in the world um, and so there's like bottles of rum which are a bit delicate so if you're jumping around them they're gonna get damaged lower in value so you've got yeah. to keep them like you've got to keep them kind of safe Protect so your don't rum. get into a battle Right, you know, it's very important, very yeah. important thing. Um, uh, like, like cloth, expensive cloth, which you can't really get wet. If you get it wet, it produces some value. So again, don't leave it on the top of the boat in a storm, okay. but don't put it on the bottom because if the water starts filling up. Nice. And then plants as well. So if you're taking plants across the world, you want to keep them wet so that right. they stay kind of healthy. So maybe you want to fill up the bottom deck of your boat and then just put the plants down there like by, you know, taking some damage and then repairing it and not bailing. So it's going to be really interesting to see that because I could come onto your boat, see your stuff, and I could do what I wanted. Like, you know, I could start pouring water on your uh, on your cloth for a laugh or I could steal it and take it because it I'll be able to know where I need to take that so Wicked. it's like really cool for us to be introducing new ways to play especially for the merchants because you know our data and feedback tells us that that's the one people kind of wanted something new to kind of go and play with us absolutely so. have you got new build rat uh, adventures we do indeed well? yes so that's coming after curse sales and that will be curse cruise so that's where we introduce uh, cursed cannonballs to the world okay. so they're going to be found emergently um, you know we've upgrading our inventory system to allow you to manage different cannonballs and stuff so finding one of those and using one of the players is you're going to see so much fun like the the rudder ball which locks your steering so you can't steer for a while yeah. and i'm going to use that when someone is sailing towards a giant rock or an island and just watch the chaos ensue right like but that. um but we're so we're bringing those in and all the commendations will be around it but because a lot of them are going to be around combat and using cursed cannibals we're also bringing in the reaper's mark which is a flag you can fly okay and it will then put your ship on the map for everyone else in your world to see yeah so it's kind of like bring it right, come on right, that's what come on have a go if you think yeah, you're hard yeah. enough or it could be like the, the person that um, 
does our like loot and law game show, like a member of our community that does this game show all the time. Amazing. Yeah. Like maybe he'll use it to put himself on the map so that people will see him and come to him, and he'll be like, no, no, I'm friendly. I've got, I'm, I'm doing a game show. Um, <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah, it's like. Joel, you've got an amazing exciting. Sea of Thieves community as well. You yes. just mentioned there. I know there was there's someone in your community that you want to give a shout out to. I'm yes, sure, right? Absolutely. So got this tweet a couple of days ago. So Liam, uh, who is seven years old, uh, has become pirate legend recently. And for us to be able to create a game like this, a multiplayer game like Sea of Thieves, and it's it's a you know it's a long kind of way to get to pirate legend. He yeah. has played the game That's for serious. a lot. And so to have a seven year old playing an online game like this and have played it for so long and to become a legend in our game, like kudos to, to Liam. Absolutely. That, like, yeah, I think we should both give him a salute. Indeed. Here's yes. to you, Liam. Boom. Well played. All right, Joe, thank you so much. Tell us when Forsaken Shores will be uh, hitting the seas. Yes, so it will be hitting the seas on September the 19th, which okay. coincidentally is International Talk Like a Pirate Day. So Fantastic. it all just converges, doesn't it? So, oh, yeah. yeah. Jeff, Jeff's going to be delighted. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, thank you very no much worries, for your man. time, thank as you. always, mate. And don't forget, you can play Sea Thieves right now with Xbox, Xbox Game Pass. Let me try and get my words out. I think I've been on that yeah. wrong. <laughs> right, it's going to be tough waiting for Forsaken Shores. It looks absolutely brilliant. Thanks, Joe. And another game I'm absolutely buzzing for is Fallout 76. And Larry has Pete Hines from Bethesda on hand to talk about it. But before that, check out this world premiere Fallout 76 trailer for the very first time on our show, right here, right now. Let's go. Today's episode, A New American Dream. What separates man from beast? No, it's not his ability to tap dance. It is his desire to build. After thermonuclear war, man's towering industrial marvels may no longer stretch to the heavens. It then falls on you and the ingenuity of your fellows to rebuild the America we hold dear. Get started with Camps, the construction and assembly mobile platform. It's the workbench of tomorrow. Once established, your camp will not only provide you with much needed shelter, but also the means to satisfy your hunger, quench your thirst, and even treat infection. The essential pillars of survival. Expand your camp by scavenging resources or mining raw materials the old-fashioned way. Then construct your home of the future. If your first home site is undesirable, use your handy camp to move it to a better location. With your home secure, you can now craft handmade ordnance at your leisure to give your altercations that personal touch. Or better yet, sell these homemade implements to your neighbors for profit. Remember, capitalism, it's the only thing keeping us from being communists. The world may have ended, but keeping up with the Joneses has not. Use those hard-earned profits to upgrade your dwelling. When your home looks important, you are important. Now you've learned how to forge the new American dream. You are completely prepared to rebuild the greatest nation in the world. As a hand-picked resident of Vault 76, it is your duty to carefully review your Vault Tech provided films yearly to fully prepare for the day when you will emerge. All right, now I'm joined by Pete Hines, this guy. 
Pete, great to see you, man. Great to see you. Happy Gamescom. It is a great Gamescom. We are here. You guys are in a booth right behind right, us. I don't right know if there. you can see it. We're How many vault boys can we get in I, one shot? One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't even. There's one over there, too. <laughs> I, I don't even. I, Pete comes with a bunch of vault boys. Now, Pete, I want you to tell us about the new camp system. Well, folks are going to be familiar with building settlements in Fallout 4. <laughs> hey, dude, how's it going? Good to see you. Looking good? Um, folks are familiar with settlement building in right. Fallout 4. The camp takes the idea and expands it. So the idea of the camp is it's a way to build settlements. You have much more freedom in terms of where you can put it, uh, but it's movable. Right. So anytime you set one down, if you pick a different spot and like, you know what, I want to move my camp here, it'll cost you some camps to do it, sure. uh, caps, but you can take your camp and relocate it right. anywhere you want. Now, it is entirely optional. So you can make the game we about see, building We can see or some of the things building. here, right? Right, and a lot of this will look familiar, like I can build structures, I can build furniture, there's a lot more stuff you can do now. I can build um, defenses, so I can put down turrets or, or mortars. Right. But the idea is now it moves as opposed to being in one spot, but it's still optional. If you want to spend the game roaming around and, and exploring locations, right. you can, but you can also decide, I want to build my own workshops, I want to have a place where I can, I can build at my camp as opposed to finding ones out in the world. So it takes a lot of what we've known from some of the work you guys did with Fallout 4 and mm -hmm. really, no pun intended, builds on it. Yeah, well, and again, this time around, because the game is online and every character is another player, you can do that building with other folks. So it's not just you building in your settlement. You can have other folks building around you. There's some even larger settlements where, where you can build cooperatively. So it is a theme of the game. You know, the whole idea of Vault 76 was it was right. the folks that were going to rebuild the world. But you do as much or as little of that as you want, just like you can play by yourself or with others, depending on how you want to play. What are you, uh, what are you guys showing here at Gamescom? Um, we're showing sort of a mix, a recap of all the stuff that we showed at E3, that we uh, showed at QuakeCon last week as yeah. part of Todd's panel. You know, we talked a little bit about the character system and perk cards and how perk cards work in terms of changing your loadout. Basically just making sure folks understand how the game works. Look, at the end of the day, it's still a role-playing game in a massive world. You know, the big difference is you can now play it with other people and have that a shared experience that folks have said for so long, boy, I wish I could play at Bethesda Game Studios, but like with my friends or, or my family. Now, you know, there's no shortage of me coming to you with feature requests, and I'll call Todd <laughs> up as well. I want to play a Deathclaw. Well, we'll add it to the list. <laughs> how, about a, how about a Deathclaw costume? Can we at least start there and yeah, move right. to actual Deathclaw? Fair. You get, Is that we'll close get that. enough? We'll go into that. Now, I, I'm really excited because there's, you, have a, you have a beta coming up, or as they say in Europe, a beta. A beta. So what can uh, you it's tell gonna us be, about? It's going to be in October. Yep. Uh, it's coming to the Xbox One first. Yep. Um, and all you have to do to be eligible is pre-order the game. Some, and, and, and you're ready to go. If you pre-order it digitally through Microsoft, yep. you literally need to do nothing else should be set up. If you order through any retailer or wherever you like to buy games, they will give you a code and walk you through the process on how to sign up. But yeah. that's it. And you'll be the first folks in the world to play Fallout 76. Now, if you really want to get your Fallout on, you can do it right now with Game yeah, Pass. Right? Fallout 4 is in Game Pass. So if you're, if you, we talked about this earlier in the show, you can get two months for two dollars. I don't $2? know what. Two dollars. I don't even know what that is in euros, it's but it's probably something two. So, probably two. Uh, but you can actually go and download Fallout 4 right now and play it, right? Two bucks for two months and on Fallout 4. That'll kind of, I was going to say it will tide you over until Fallout 76, but it'll tide you over well past that. All that content, user mods, all that good stuff, you can play it forever. It is unbelievable. Or if you come to Gamescom, make sure you stop by the uh, stop by your Come booth. by and get a picture with uh, this Vault Boy, with the other Vault Boy. With Pete. We have so <laughs> many Vault Boys. <laughs> all right, it's always great to see you, Pete. Thanks for chatting with us. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Julia, what's next? What better way to celebrate your love for Fallout 76 than with this new bundle? I mean, I've already got my onesie, so I'm good on that front. It includes an Xbox One X, wireless controller, a copy, of course, of Fallout 76, plus you get one month of Xbox Game Pass and one month of Xbox Live Gold. The Xbox One X Fallout 76 bundle comes out November 14, and you can begin pre-ordering it right after this show. Now, let's pass things off to Jeff, who's got some very special news for all you PC gamers out there. That's right, Julia. There's lots of big Xbox news here at Gamescom, but we've got news for you PC gamers, too, with our announcement that five great games will be available soon on Steam and on PC Disc. First up, Record Definitive Edition, an action-packed adventure in which charming robotic companions and tough platforming are your key to saving humankind. Super Lucky's Tale is a delightful 3D platformer that follows the adventures of a brave fox named Lucky on his quest to help his sister rescue the mysterious Book of Ages. 
Disneyland Adventures allows Disney fans of all ages to explore Disneyland Park, embarking on quests, meeting characters, and you don't even have to wait in line. In the 3D platforming game Rush, a Disney Pixar adventure, fans can visit the worlds of six beloved Disney Pixar films to solve puzzles and uncover hidden secrets. Finally, you can create the zoo of your dreams with Zoo Tycoon Ultimate Animal Collection. My Ultimate Animal Collection Zoo, uh, it'd be probably three different types of wombats. They're all in the game, and it's on PC. Now we're going to send it over to another wombat fan who's getting pretty excited about the debut of a new mode for Ori and the Will of the Wisp. Take it away, Rikari. Jeff, let's be real. You are the real Wombat fan. Now, this is super cool if you're an Ori fan like I am. An all-new mode for Ori and the Will of the Wisps has been revealed here at Gamescom Spirit Trials. Now, Spirit Trials are courses that are spread throughout the game where players can take time away from the adventure to race by dashing, burrowing, grappling, grappling, and leaping alongside other players' ghosts to compete for a top score in in-game rewards. It's something out there for those speedrunners. All right, now Metro Exodus set the gaming world on fire when it was announced a year ago, and now the team is ready to reveal even more. Can you say brand new level? Thanks, Rikari. Metro Exodus is a super intriguing game, and we've got John Block here from 4 Games to show us how it's coming along. Welcome, John. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Jo John, it's great to see you. It's, and welcome to the Xbox booth. Yeah, thanks. You, now, you're debuting a brand new level in Metro Exodus. Tell us about this new environment. So this new environment is, uh, we're, we're calling it uh, the, the Taiga, and it's, uh, it takes place in a forest environment uh, thousands of kilometers away from, uh, from the Moscow city center. Uh, where Artyom's journey began um, many, many months before. Uh, this takes place in autumn. Okay. And uh, so, uh, you know, the, the game takes place over the course of a year and you see all four seasons. So this is actually uh, pretty far along in the game already at this point. Okay. So Go ahead, Reddy. Oh, no, I was just, I was just thinking, because like, I, I had to go on the demo earlier. Yes. One of the things I absolutely loved about the game is that you have so many different methods of approaching different situations that you're going to come across. I think in the gameplay that we've got, it's a stealthy approach. Uh, can you kind of talk us through what we're going to be seeing right here? Uh, so you can play Metro Exodus many different ways. You can, you can play... Uh, you know, full, you know, guns blazing, or you can take a stealth approach. The game tends to encourage that because it does become very difficult when you when you go, you know, all out uh, because it is a survival game. Uh, ammunition is scarce, resources are scarce. Um, but uh, we've added a lot of, uh, uh, you know, elements to the AI and uh, uh, stealth functionality of the game to yeah. make it a lot more robust this time around. Uh, we've worked a lot on uh, communication uh, for AI so that it's a lot easier to understand what they're doing right. uh, without it being overt, without you know uh, bringing in HUD elements that are unnecessary, which is something that's kind of a staple of the series. We like to, to you know, really let you immerse yourself in the game and, 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 and feel the, the, the realism of, of everything that we're trying to, uh, to allow you to experience. Yeah. And uh, so a lot of these things come together. We, we, we've tried to like really build on that uh, this time around to provide a lot more of a dynamic experience where you can uh, uh, adapt the way that you approach a scenario, and the game adapts to how you're uh, you know, approaching depending on what you're doing, what the AI sees you doing, and you're able to, uh, to kind of change that on the fly. Now we've, yeah. see, we've seen some factions here, um, but it's not just other factions you have to worry about. You've got some vicious animal encounters yeah. as well, right? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, one of the things that we teased at, the, uh, at our announce uh, you know, last year right. at E3. I remember uh, that. Was, was from this level. Right. And uh, we had the, big, the, the bear that comes out at yeah. the end. And, and uh, he's back, he's in this level. He's scared and, yeah. <laughs> the hell out of me. And it's it's uh, he's he's one of the one of the creatures he's uh, you know in this level that uh, you know the player is going to have to uh, encounter, um, and uh, there's also I think uh, you know at, at some point here you'll you'll see some uh, yeah oh, there's some wolves there's a wolf <laughs> yeah there's some uh, some mutated wolves that you'll have to, to fight off um, and uh, oh 
there's a there's a bunch of new humans that uh, you'll come across in this uh, uh, level, just like any of the other environments. We have yeah. so many new societies for you to encounter. That's one of the things. How are those human interactions going to go? Because um, there's going to be multiple factions. Are there going to be uh, factions that you can ally with? Well, some some factions are going to be just pure evil, as, as you would expect. You know, of course. You know, bandits are probably just you know. Nefarious no, 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 people nice that are people. you know out for no good, yeah. Right. Um, but some might not be. Some might be neutral. Some will react depending on how you act upon them as well. Yeah. So the game kind of adapts to how you play because we really want you to feel like you are entering the shoes of RTL and the main character and uh, assuming that role and deciding what type of person he is. Right. Fantastic, John. It looks it looks amazing. Thank looks you. like a world I want to go into and live, and, and sounds you. like it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. All right. You can pre-order Metro Exodus ahead of its release on February 22nd, 2019, and Xbox Game Pass subscribers, you can play Metro Last Light right now. And just when you thought you couldn't eat another bite of gaming goodness, here comes another course. In a few minutes, we're going to unveil the never-before-seen gameplay trailer for Devil May Cry 5 and talk to the team behind the game. But first, Life is Strange 2 has finally graduated from teasing us to a full-on game trailer. I have no idea where we are. Feels like we're walking nowhere. I don't think Daniel understands what's going on. I can't tell him the truth now. I just can't. How am I supposed to take care of us out here? Nothing we can't do. As long as we're together. Is this the first time that the the, the, the date, right. and the date as well? That we premiere for the date. That's awesome. That's right. RTA 2019. All right, cool. We'll have to the Try not to get us killed on the way there.
Perfect timing. Spiele auf der leistungsstärksten Konsole der Welt. All right, there you go, Devil May Cry 5 confirmed. It's wrong in there, but March 8th, 2019. Uh, They switched the dates back and forth in Europe. So yeah. I don't think it's August. It's it's much sooner than that. It's March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. March 8th. Now here to give us more details on how the game is shaping up is Itsuna-san and Matt from Capcom. How are y'all doing today? Good. How you doing, man? I'm, you know what? I got to match your excitement. So All I'm right. doing that great. Oh, yeah, I am doing so that happy. great. People are finally getting a chance to play the game here at Gamescom for the first time. We did yesterday. We and did. If there's a better demo here at Gamescom, I mean. No disrespect to anything that we've seen before, but I'd be very impressed if there's something better here. Look, we really appreciate it. We are super excited. We're, it was, it's been amazing all day long. It's been the longest line from what I can tell, and it's just such an honor to have so many people excited about the game, you know? So let's talk about the game. Um, in playing, immediately it became clear there are entirely new mechanics in Devil May Cry 5, starting with Here the are. Devil Breakers, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's why I don't have my sleeve here. Exactly, so the Devil Breakers are the new system for Nero that is going to give him a chance to experiment with all kinds of new gameplay. There's going to be eight different standard Devil Breakers that players are going to be able to use, and there's all kinds of different moves that you could do with the Devil Breakers that you couldn't do before in Devil May Cry 4. Yeah, we're seeing some of that action here. Look at that, there you go, we're, we're jumping also right seeing, in. Tell us about this boss here. All right, yeah, well, it turns out, so this is the boss fight that everybody playing the Gamescom demo is getting a chance to play. This is the Goliath. Fun fact, the Goliath is based on our buddy uh, Brian, who's the brand manager in Europe for Devil May Cry. At least that's what I'm telling people. And he's huge. He's, he's huge. huge, exactly. He's huge and he's got a big booming voice just like this guy. So here we go. Already we're starting with this, right? Eternal san Yeah. Taking a look here. What's what's going on with the Goliath here? Look at this. Oh, what is this? He That's right, that's right. So this is this is exclusive to inside Xbox right here. You see this, he just switched over to the Buster Arm, which is Nico's way of trying to replicate the Devil Bringer. Boom! Oh, I love the pose. I love the pose. I was not able right. to do that. He right. was doing that to us. Yeah, it's, absolutely. I got lost around. Oh, so, it well, so and that's the thing. You guys didn't have the chance to play us that because we don't have that in this build. That's an exclusive just for inside Xbox to show you guys one of the special Devil Breakers that you can use in the game that we don't have the build today. That, that's okay. why we do. All right, I got it. That's, yeah. why, that's, why, we that's, that's why, why we do. That's why you got it. I've got to admit, I'm, I'm a bit new to the franchise, and I dabbled a bit in 4, but Devil May Cry 5 is going to be my first foray into it. I need to know the setup. What do I I need to know about this game. Tell me a bit about the story. Well, look, Devil May Cry is a game about Dante and Nero and, they, and the descendants of Sparta who are taking on demons, okay? So that's kind of the gist of it anyways. Uh, if you want to know how to get into Devil May Cry 5, I would suggest on Xbox Game Pass, you're going to get the chance to play Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. So I'd say check that out, and that'll give you a nice warm-up for what you can play in Devil May Cry 5. All right, that sounds good. All right, why don't we look at uh, a little bit more gameplay, and at Sunosan, perhaps you'll you'll tell us what we're seeing Ooh, here. Sounds good. Yeah, multi All right, so it's a little bit more of the Goliath thing. here, I think, from the beginning, and we just saw a cool grapple move. That's right, that's right. So it's why you have so much So you're right, there is this wire move that he's doing. This is actually an approximation of One of the moves you can do with the Devil Bringer in Devil May Cry 4. You can still do that in here, and whether you have a Devil Breaker or not, you can always do that move. You'll also notice, though, that there's this gauge in the top left corner that charges up. That's something called, uh, you could do something called the EX Act. And that's a move that if you time your button press just right, you're going to rip up your sword right after doing an attack and strengthen your next attack. So, I wish we had talked to you before we had yeah, played. Before we played right, I absolutely, talk to actually, us. I'll ask you this right now. There's there's melee. There's obviously the, the guns yeah. that you carry, and there's their, your devil breaker, right? What do I need to know going in? What's the best way to chain combos get get that best well, ranking? The best way to chain combos is to do a whole bunch of different moves real quick here. But look at this. So Hit that here, way. Nero's using the Gerber a devil devil <laughs> devil breaker. Yeah. And you'll notice that he's got a supercharged move that you can do with that. And what he just the, the right there is called the pedal ray. That's this. 
move that bounces lasers off the walls. It's actually the most effective in small environments because every time it bounces, you're going to find that it actually gets stronger. So it was really smart of our guy, Yoshida san he's the one doing the gameplay here, <laughs> to <laughs> uh, use that move in that environment. But to get back to your question, so Nero's got the red queen and the blue rose that he's had from Devil May Cry 4. So both melee attacks and gun attacks they can use at a distance, as well as these double breakers, which are new to the series. And there's a bit of a risk reward, I feel like, with the Devil Breakers. Like, if you rely on them too much, you lose that arm, right? Exactly, you're correct. What's going to happen is there's a couple different ways that they can break. You notice in the bottom right corner here that you actually have a limited number of Devil Breakers at any given time. And so if you take damage while you're using a Devil Breaker, they could break. Or if you do one of their super moves, then that could break it. Or then finally, there's another one called Breakaway, where if you hit the left bumper, you're going to automatic, you're going to break one completely. Uh, but you could do that on purpose. And the reason you would want to do that is, a, if you want to switch over to one of the double breakers in your inventory, or B, if you need, if you're in a sticky situation, that acts as an emergency of fate. All right. Well, in our last few seconds, do you have any shout outs that you want to give? Man, I do. Actually, I want to give a big shout out to the dev team in Osaka because they are doing a fantastic job. They're working hard every night. Yoshida-san, Ikeda-san, Zibin, Midanina, Gamati, the Takadan. So, they're working on their butts off right now on doing the final adjustments to the game right now. Also, just a real quick shout out to the Devil May Cry 5 Resetter Discord. Lots of really nice people in there. But yeah, that's where we go, man. Devil May Cry 5 coming out March 8th, 2019. And we're going to find out more about the game at TGS. All right. I know you guys are probably wondering about Dante. I'm, I'm wondering a lot. There's so a lot that I need to catch month, up on. Right? That yeah, is next coming month. Coming up soon. We'll have to, we have to go to Tokyo now. Yeah, we'll tune yeah, in to TGS, man. We have a business justification. We're there. We're there. Come well, on thank over. you so much for yeah. joining us. We absolutely appreciate it. And for those of you Game Pass subscribers, keep in mind, you can play Devil May Cry 4 SE right now. And there is still a lot more inside Xbox coming up. But Kari, what's next? Well, Jeff, I think it's time to spend some time with our favorite new heroine, Sable. Sable and it's like nothing else. If you're a fan of Studio Ghibli and 1980s European comics, then this game will feel both wonderfully familiar and absolutely unique. So Gregorius is here from Raw Fury to tell us a little bit more about the game. So how are you doing, Greg? You're right. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Glad to be here at Gamescom. I mean, the art style is incredibly beautiful. Kind of reminds me of sort of early, not the movie Tintin, but the early kind of Tintin cartoons. Was that intentional? Yeah, we were massively inspired by the clear line style of European comics, specifically Mobius, Tintin, and I mean, those stuff look great in kind of frames, but we had to animate it and bring it to life. So then we kind of looked at more Japanese animation, Studio Ghibli, Akira, and like just all sorts of anime, I guess, uh, just to try and bring that stuff to life and make a kind of make something so stylized feel like it really has a spirit and a soul. So I suppose obviously the thing that will draw you into that of course is the, the, the character. Tell us a little bit about the main protagonist, Sable. Yeah, Sable is, uh, is this young girl, she's leaving her clan for the first time 
and it's kind of she's going on a rite of passage. Uh, so it's kind of like a gap year, but like a bit better than just going to Thailand. Yeah, so, so yeah, a bit better than Thailand, better than or maybe that. worse. You're kind of in a desert, and you're. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like you'd learn more about yourself than by not going to Thailand. Than yeah. To Thailand. Anyway, True. I digress. Yeah, yeah. Carry on. It, so well, she has a hover bike, which is yeah. pretty cool. I'd like a hover bike to drive around the desert with. But she's leaving her, her clan, and she's basically going out to learn about the world, learn about herself, and kind of discover what's out there like we really want to make everything about the game feel like it has a sense of wonder a sense of mystery and something to discover and something kind of special that people kind of naturally discover absolutely. stuff right yeah yeah so that's exactly my kind of game um you've got quite an eclectic team working with you on table tell us a little bit about the guys behind it and of course the amazing music as well yeah, so on the music side, we have Japanese Breakfast involved. So She's good. a fantastic artist, uh, super excited to be working with her. We have Meg Jayanth writing for us. She wrote 80 Days. Martin Kvalle, he's doing the sound design. Uh, and Micah, who's doing our animation. And then Daniel and I, my business partner, we are kind of the core, core team members and we work in a shed. Uh, so <laughs> hence the name Shedworks. Shed works. Uh, I wondered where that was. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's really nice. Like, it's really personal. We're making something that I think we are like hoping is an expression of, of this team. We have a lot of like nomads in our team. So the two of us work in a shed, but Michelle, Japanese Breakfast, she's kind of writing the music and the two of us as she's traveling around the world. Meg is constantly between Bangalore and uh, London. And yeah, yeah it's, it's really exciting. It's kind of like a millennial kind of like Jack Kerouac on the road. And it feels like the team is very much like that. And that's, and the game is like that. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it, it's just a, it's really exciting to just make something that is an expression of us and something that, yeah, like I said, is personal, is telling a story that we are, we're making. We're not, um, you know, we're not procedurally generating a narrative yeah. or anything. We're, we're trying to tell everyone about this specific character and what that, what she's about. Yeah. yeah, and obviously it's like, you know, as you play, you're putting yourself into that story and how you play, basically. Yeah. I'm sold. I think it's beautiful. Um, can you tell everyone when it's going to be coming out? Uh, yeah, late 2019, we're saying at the moment. That's very generic. I was hoping for something a bit more specific, yeah, Greg. Sorry. But, all right, fine, I'll deal with that. Anyway, while we're talking about unique experiences, gamers in the US this summer played Halo Fire Team at Ra Ra sorry, Fire Team Raven at Dave and Buster's. This is a massive arcade setup that's truly incredible and is coming soon to the UK, Australia, Middle East, Canada, and China, but mainly UK. That's great. So here's a look behind the scenes at Halo Fire Team Raven. We have been talking about a Halo arcade game for years. Actually, the, the seed of that conversation is a Halo pinball machine, which we still haven't made. So the idea has always been knocking around in the back of our heads. Just what would it mean to take Halo out of sort of the console and PC world and bring it, I guess, out into the wild? I want to say I s approached Microsoft about um, working on a Halo arcade game probably six years ago. The idea has been around for forever, but I think without that, uh, that move from Raw Thrills, we would never have found what the right uh, vehicle for that was. I got called up to the front of the office and I was just like, I was just asked would you like to make a Halo game? And I was like, hell yeah, I want to make a Halo game. Who does not want to make a Halo game? Number one thing that Roth Rolls and Play Mechanics pride ourselves on is that we are arcade game makers. We understand arcade games. Our company, creates games from concept through software, hardware, mechanical, and then all the way to manufacture. An arcade game is a physical, big game that sits in a location. And to do that, it takes lots of people and lots of, of different types of work and effort to get us to that point. See, normally I'm doing software, which is mainly what I do. This is what the actual camera is going to look like. Um, and software starts first, right? So in software, we come up with the imagery of the game. This is our G7 engine. The ideas of the game, the tempo and the pace of the game, what are the sort of key 
elements that the gameplay is going to be. The others, the impact. There's nothing we can do. You know, we put a lot of effort into capturing all the little details of Halo. So I am currently creating the effects for the Scarab in our engine. It's all recreated from scratch. And it takes us a lot of effort to, to, to capture, to create it, to, so that the players, specifically the fans, can appreciate you know, that we are really trying to give them a true Halo experience. Captain Keys. Good to see you, Master Chief. Set in the same time frame as Halo Combat Evolved. I'm initiating Cold Protocol Article 2. We're abandoning the Autumn. Captain Keys is placing the Pillar of Autumn in Combat Alert Alpha. And we follow Fireteam Raven that ends up, they are on the Pillar of Autumn. And the fire team obviously made perfect sense. So we're really an offshoot team that's fighting a big battle just to support Master Chief. Current enforcers are moving in on the Pillar of Autumn wreckage. Let's help push them back, Raven. This is our development station. We design the game on this, we make the game on this, we test the game on this, we play the game on this. You know, our goal is to have four people enjoying the game, but also have a crowd of people behind it viewing it. Usually we get, I would say, 30, 40% into the game. When then the mechanical engineers come in. So in our world, we have to make things that hold up to abuse, to uh, liquid spills. There's all kinds of things that we have to deal with in the coin-op world. We have a responsibility to make these things work for average, large, small. Everybody needs to be able to, to control the gun, to control it comfortably, and to be able to obviously get in and out of the cabinet without problems. So all of that needs to get assembled in its final state at the manufacturing facility. And there they will get all the hardware necessary, the I.O. board, the monitors, the computer, the gun control. Our goal was to get this thing as big and bright as possible so that in any location, you can't miss it. We love to go out to the locations and watch people playing the game. Nice. That's our payoff. It took me back to the days of Halo CE where you would have to go together to a room to play together. We really took literally the old LAN couch experience of Combat Evolved and put it into public space. I want people to see this. I want them to be shocked that somebody actually built this thing. And I want this game to be everything. Big, exciting, epic. <sighs> you can see the full documentary at the URL below. Next, Larry and Jeff are gonna tell us what's coming to Xbox Game Pass. Guys, are we going to keep on the Halo theme? Tell me so! Uh, yeah? For yeah? you, Julia, anything. Do we have it? I think we have it. Oh, you know what that means, Jeff. Tell if me. you've got Xbox Game Pass, good news, the Master Chief Collection is coming! All right. That's right, one of the most requested Our Game duty Pass... as soldiers is to protect humanity, whatever the cost. My campaign against the humans. That's not going to happen. Chief! If he leads the Covenant fleet to Earth, they won't stand a chance. You have to stop him.
one of the most requested Xbox Game Pass titles will be coming to the service September 1st. I think you're, even with that pronunciation, underselling it a little bit. The Master Chief Collection is four complete games in one tidy package, all with multiplayer, weighing it at 600 achievements with 6,000 gamer score. Wow. You've got Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3, and yes, Halo 4. More importantly though, this represents a major milestone for 343 Industries and the community spanning, spanning several months. They've worked together in the Xbox Insider Preview program to test and refine major new improvements to Master Chief Collection. Now, when it releases September 1st on Xbox Game Pass, the Master Chief Collection, all of these improvements will be available, including improved matchmaking, offline land support, faster load times, and Xbox One X enhanced improvements, including 4K and HDR support, and even better, if you're a multiplayer fan, check it out, 60 frames per second. Halo 3 multiplayer on the pit at 60 FPS, I'm in. It's like butter. Now that's the update you're gonna see in September. The team, they're not done. Master Chief Collection will continue to see improvements, including an upcoming custom game browser, so you can create and find unique player-created matches and game types. Find what you want. Oh, God, I love this. This is so fantastic. Now, that's a whole lot of news. How about we tag out and bring some new hosts in so they can keep oh, going? Ready? Okay. Go! Slap hands. Slap hands. We're good. All right. Whew. All right, yes, that is huge news for Halo fans, but the Xbox Game Pass team has also had themselves one whale of an August. We've had Hitman Season 1, which, if you haven't played it, harkens back to the best, most creative, challenging, and strategic entries in the series. Agent 47 has never had so many toys to play with and opportunities to exploit. The team also added Ruiner and Rise Son of Rome, which I know is one of the very we, first games. We both loved it. Like, First time, got my Xbox One, run home, and just finished playing that game. It was awesome. Uh, we've also got The Escapist, The Walking Dead, if you love that TV series, awesome game. And that game you love, Connect Rush, a Disney Pixar adventure. Because they do a great job. You know, we're big Pixar fans at home. My son and I, my son's five years old, and they take the worlds of Pixar movies and bring them into the game, and you get to play through those worlds. It's I, amazing. I need to have a go on that. And also, something that I love, Dead Rising 2. If you love zombies, Got to play Dead Rising 2. Absolutely. Now, that was all earlier this month. More recently, Bethesda added Doom and Rage to Xbox Game Pass, two single-player shooters at the top of their craft. And if indie games are more your speed, give Graveyard Keeper a look, which is like absolutely terrifying moments. It's quite creepy, but you've got to give it a go. You're, you're ferrying people to the great beyond, and you're collecting based on that. I know, in the RPG others, yeah. world, it's yes. like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to collect you. Let's go, go right ahead. No, it's all good. <laughs> and right now, right here during Gamescom, we've got a special promotion that Larry actually told you about earlier. If you do not have Game Pass yet, you can get your first month for $2, and your second month is free. So there you have it, a ton of great games this month. Master Chief Collection coming September 1st with a huge update, including Xbox One X Enhanced and a special Gamescom only promotion for Xbox Game Pass. $2 for two months of Game Pass if you're not yet a member. And get this, we're still not done. The Xbox Game Pass team has cooked up a brand new way to manage your catalog. Starting today, we're inviting you, our viewers, to participate in the beta for the new Xbox Game Pass mobile app. Now this app provides a new way to discover and download load Xbox Game Pass games, even when you're away from your Xbox One console. We sat down with the project lead last week to talk about the new app. We're developing a Game Pass mobile app so that users can access their Game Pass subscription and manage it anytime, anywhere. So we want users to know that we're developing this app for them, and so we would love to get feedback from users of how we're doing, what they like, what we can improve on, what they like to see as we start to develop this app. We want users to be able to discover the next game that they want to play in the Game Pass catalog. Once they discover the game that they want to play, they can download it to their Xbox home console. They can also keep updated on their Game Pass subscription, so understand when games are coming to the catalog, when games are leaving, and also see the games that are most popular in Game Pass, as well as get exclusive deals that are only available to Game Pass subscribers. Additionally, they can browse the games by different genres as well. If they have a specific title in mind, they can search in the app. So right now, for Android users, they can go to the Google Play Store to search that Game Pass app and find it and download it to the device. 
On iOS, we have a limited number of spots, and so if users want to help us test it out, they should act now. They can go and search uh, through TestFlight, go and sign up, and then they'll uh, receive an invitation. You heard it here first, the Xbox Game Pass beta app is available today. If you have an Android device, the app will be available for everyone to download in the Google Play Store soon. And spots are limited for the beta on iOS, so if you're someone with an iOS device, you'll need to act fast. Go to the website below right now and submit that application to be part of the beta. In just a moment, Graham will dig into Bohemia Interactive's Daisy, but let's get that conversation started right now on the right foot, shall we? Good was that trailer. And August 29th, that is right around the corner. So I'd like to welcome Eugene Harton, lead producer at Bohemia Interactive. Welcome, Eugene. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? Doing all right. It's a perfect day. We're having an amazing time with the players out there at our booth. So it's quite, quite good. Speaking to you, oh, Mike, sorry. for me, Eugene. There you yeah, yeah, sorry for that. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, amazing trailer, mate. Um, for people who don't know Daisy or maybe haven't played it before, give us an introduction to the game. Okay, so the game itself is a hardcore simulation, first and foremost. We want to meet your expectations about living in this amazing post-Soviet world that's all about apocalypse and infected and basically waking up somewhere we need to stay alive. And that's that's the thing that the game is about. Now, I love the environment and the world you've created yeah. in DayZ, and you've really taken inspiration from, from real world environments, yeah. real world places. Like, talk us through that process. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, the game is actually set in the world of Cherneris. And Cherneris was created quite a long time ago by Bohemia, and, and these large worlds are something that are very, in almost DNA of Bohemia, interactive, and being part of our games for quite some time. And Cherneris, is actually a snapshot of uh, Czech Republic uh, from around the place that Bohemia is actually based. Okay, cool. All right, so this is like you're battling and surviving yeah, yeah. in We're neighborhoods actually, and areas and towns yeah. that you actually know. Yeah. It's basically, you can go out of our office and you're in there. It's it's so, so close. But not as many zombies, right? No, 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 no zombies there. <laughs> okay, good, that's a relief. Um, now, one of the things I love about Daisy is, uh, is of course, the hardcore survival and the action. But it's, it's the relationships between players in the game that, that really intrigues me, the kind of moral dilemmas that, that are thrown up. Is that one of the most important things for, for you guys at Bohemia? So, a lot of people think, like, we're definitely not a battle royale game, although some people might think so when they look at the game uh, the first time. But in general, like, the action is only part of the interaction that you're having in the game. And when you're meeting other players and using voice over IP to, to talk to them and, and actually create alliances, there is nothing strict about it. Like, you can do whatever you want. So the moral dilemmas that you have in the game itself when you're playing it um, and, and features that empower those interactions like cannibalism, for example, because wow. eating human meat is a thing in DayZ. And I remember a couple of stories from, from, the, from basically our sessions in general mm. where we're like hunting newbies who are coming from the coast um, further inland through generous trying to survive mm -hmm. and we're feeding them human meat. And human meat actually causes screwing game, which is like a, 
like a um, disease that makes your hands shake. So okay. ranged weapons are hardly usable after wow. you do that. And you actually have like a really crazy laugh when you have Kuru. So you attract zombies around you. Right. So it's like a very detrimental thing. But also, if you need to survive, you'll do anything to survive. And those moral demons are very important. So what are the, you know, you, this really is a hardcore survival yeah, yeah. game, right? So you've talked about cannibalism, which mm -hmm. is, you know, I mean, you have to be pretty desperate. Yeah, we're 18 plus. So. Right. <laughs> what are some of the other mechanics for that, that kind of survival? Like, what do players have to do? Yeah, yeah. So basically, the character itself is simulated in many different ways so from blood types. For, for example, your character is kept alive not only by health, by blood itself as well. So we bleed out, you need to replenish the blood. It regenerates very slowly, uh, but you can get a transfusion from another player. But you need to find one which has the same blood type as you. Right. So we get deep into the simulation itself and want to keep you immersed, making sure that everything that you, you would experience in real life in a similar situation, you get to experience in DayZ. Amazing. Now, so DayZ, we've seen the day August 29th coming to Xbox Game yeah. Preview. Do you have a short message for Xbox gamers you know, entering the world of DayZ for the first time? The one thing that I would really want to say is that DayZ is an amazing hardcore game and I can't wait for you guys to actually try it out uh, on 29th of August when it comes to Game Preview. Um, I don't think there's experience like DayZ anywhere else on Xbox, right. so I'm hopeful that you'll at least try it and, and enjoy it as much as we do. All right, Eugene, that's amazing. I can't wait to try it myself. August 29th, so much great info there in DayZ, right? Uh, so, on to Division 2. Uh, at E3, they showed us a glimpse of a ravaged Washington, D.C., but the team is back with a brand new look at the world you'll be fighting for next year. Let's take a look, shall we? How could this have happened here? Of all the capitals, of all the nations on Earth, none more vigilant. Safeguarded. Prepared. Was it vanity? Bad luck? Or something more sinister? One thing is beyond question. This is where we push back. This is our defining moment. If we fail, our nation falls. We are the free world's last line of defense. We're here with Rich and Dan to talk all things Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Welcome guys and thank you very much for joining us because today we're going to get a sneak peek at Warrior's Trial. Can you tell us what we're going to look at just in a moment because uh, I know we're all big to the Tomb Raider fans Absolutely. here. I'm, we were talking about this actually right before we went live. Just a few weeks left, yeah? You guys got to be excited. We are very excited. We, we cannot wait for fans around the world to get their hands on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's been a labor of love for us and we know that they want to be there for Lara Croft's defining moment, so we can't wait for them to play. Absolutely. So you have to take us through the trial. We don't have to B-roll with this, but take us through what those trials are. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider is all about bringing the tombs to the most terrifying level that they've ever been, and the Warrior's Trial is an amazing example of that, because you have to remember Lara Croft is at the height of her skills. She is the most capable, the most calculating she's ever been. So in order for there to be a challenge, we have to dial up everything else. So the tombs, the combat, the traversal, everything has to be even harder to give you a challenge, to give Lara a challenge. So Warrior's Trial is all about delivering that challenge. And the Warrior's Trial for us, when we start thinking about it at the beginning, it was all about, you know, when we talk about a rise, about deadly tombs, the, the tomb needs to be more dangerous. In this case, for Warrior's Trial, is a perfect example of everything tries to kill you. Even the things that you interact with try to kill you. And the interesting part of that, of that tomb, the actual tomb that you're going to see, it's, it's really a mechanism. You know, it's a mechanism coming from the ground. This is something we push. We have one guy on the team that built it, all that with, the, you know, with some Lego, so physically building it. And they did a lot of research to make sure that what we're showcasing 
even though it looks like technologies that they could use the mind at the time, they didn't do it because we're stretching reality, <laughs> but they, they had the technology to do that. Whatever it was with hydro, you know, with uh, hydraulic and things like that, it was really possible. So this is very exciting to show. We, we yeah. do have some gameplay as well, which we're going to take a quick look at as well. Um, so should we kind of throw this on? So what, what are we seeing here? It's on the top. Yeah. So of course we have to start with the high dive, right? It's the fan favorite. The of course. We love letting Lara go full 360 degree movement underwater. So we start just by letting people know that if you explore enough, you may find even a challenge tomb underwater. Because underwater survival is a key part of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider, you were just paddling around the surface, you could submerge just a little bit. Now this is full on claustrophobic, manage your oxygen, that scares me because I remember the first time I wandered in the last Tomb Raider game, I wandered too far into a cave expecting to find a tomb and I found a bear instead. And I, <laughs> I already heard you mention everything yeah. wants to kill yes. you. Everything does and, and that's the same thing with underwater where you've got moray eels, you've got piranhas, you've got crevasses, you've got to squeeze through. Lara doesn't have an oxygen tank so again, you don't know if what's waiting on the other side. It might just be your death. That's kind and of terrifying. Pushing. So we were pushing the spelunking experience. We we kind of like experienced that with on Rise of Tomb Raider. In this case, we push it a lot. And one of the place, the only place on Earth that is not fully discovered, it's all these underground caverns. And in this game, we wanted to push that even further. So having going underwater, yes. you know, not knowing if you're going to have enough air or not knowing what's going to happen next, but finding a tomb, you know, it's very rewarding. So that was super important for us. And you and talk about fan favorites. One of my favorite parts, me being the fan of the series that I am. <laughs> I loved getting towards what I thought was the end of the tomb, and the floor would suddenly give out from me, and we had yes. that sequence, that animation, where I'm uncontrollably sliding to and what I hoped wasn't certain doom. We're absolutely delivering even bigger challenge tombs, so I think you're gonna like that, because before, the, the challenge tombs were great little, you know, smaller areas, but now the crypts are as big as what the challenge tombs used to be in Rise of the Tomb Raider, and now the challenge tombs are as big as the regular tombs. Also, what are we uh, starting to see here? Because we're coming up to the end of the gameplay kit. Right, so right now, what you're seeing is another example of all the pieces that Lara has to interact with yeah. actually being dangerous as well. You saw that she cut her arm on one of the inactive traps. That's to let you know that those obsidian blades are still going to kill you. So, of course, there are traps in the tombs, but there are also just puzzle pieces that if you fail to interact with them correctly, will kill you. So this is, right now, we've never shown anything beyond this oh moment. God. So this is the first time that you're going to get to see how you have to interact with the different puzzle elements of the Warrior's Trial. And you can see that this is filled with spinning contraptions, blades, flames, everything trying to stop Lara from reaching the secret. You seriously weren't joking when you said everything's been like up to notch. But that spinning flame. It looks incredible. I love that if the camera cut back right now, they'd see Benny and I hunched over watching this gameplay reveal yeah. for the first time with everybody else. Like, we're super excited for this. Well, we love, we love, and thank you, we, lo we love making it feel like Lara has to earn the secrets of the world. You know, if you think about Shadow of the Tomb Raider, just like every other game in, in the Tomb Raider series, it is always about the world being a character that is pushing against Lara to protect its secrets. Yeah. And so, if Lara's at the height of her skills, the world pushes back harder than ever. So things like this challenge tomb are there to protect the skills that you unlock by reaching the center. I'm excited. I know Benny's certainly excited. I want to thank you both so much for joining us. Just a few short weeks away. We're almost there, yeah? Remember, Xbox Game Pass subscribers can play Rise of the Tomb Raider right now. All right, well, you know what goes great with a fantastic new game release? A hot new bundle, of course. Check out the Xbox One X Shadow of the Tomb Raider bundle. So it's got a terabyte of storage, and it comes with the full game download of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a wireless controller, a one-month Xbox Game Pass trial with access to over 100 games, over 100 games, and a 14-day Xbox Live Gold trial. So pre-order away. So coming up in just a moment, Graham will be sitting down with Ralph Fulton from Playground Games to talk all things Forza Horizon 4. But first, a deeper look into one of the announcements from here at Gamescom. Bandai Namco have partnered with Supermassive Games, yes, that's right, Supermassive Games, to bring you an exciting new horror anthology series called The Dark Pictures. The first game is called Man of Madame and will launch in 2019. Here's Pete Samuels from Supermassive to give us a first look. I'm 
Pete Samuels. I'm the managing director of Supermassive Games and the executive producer for the Dark Pictures Anthology. You should have never gone down to that plane in the first place. It's bad luck. You think you can scavenge down there and it makes no difference, but every single thing you bring back has an essence. It's like a ghost you invite to the surface. People drown in these waters and you have to respect their resting place. Damn straight. Brad, you got a fun ghost story, right? Dark Pictures Anthology is a series of standalone horror games building on Supermassive's reputation for horror, where the choices that you make and the actions that you take define the stories that you get. First game, Man of Madame, will release in 2019. Our plan from there is to release two games a year. Each story is unique and has different characters, different environments, and is based on different subgenres of horror. Gamescom 2018 is an incredibly exciting time, an important milestone for Supermassive. Not only is it our 10-year anniversary as a studio, and we're announcing the Dark Pictures as a significant horror anthology, but we're also announcing a brand new partnership, an exciting partnership with Bandai Namco Entertainment, and it's the very first time that we're announcing that we're bringing our games to Xbox, and everybody in the studio is massively excited about that. Spooky stuff there. Right, it's my favorite time of Gamescom. I am here with Ralph Fulton from Playground Games. Ralph, how you doing, mate? I'm good, how are you? What do you think of our stage this year? I it's love it, nice. yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a good look for the show, right? Yeah, it's... absolutely. I wish we were a bit closer to your McLaren Senna over there. Thank you for yeah. bringing it back again. You know you're not allowed any closer than you've been. Uh, <laughs> You bet. You know, I, got, rules. I got in at E3 and then got into trouble retrospectively because apparently like everyone else was starting to try and get into it. I was yeah. like, it wasn't my fault. It's, it's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Forza Horizon 4, it's coming up very fast now. Isn't it? Yeah, we're on the train now, aren't we? Um, so yeah, we're here at Gamescom. We have got uh, a bunch of things that we're, we're showing people for the first time, a bunch of things we're talking about for the first time, as well as obviously recapping uh, some of the big things about the game. There's so many big, exciting things about the game. As we talked about at E3, it's in Britain, which is awesome. Um, Seasons is a huge component uh, of the game. Mm -hmm. We're doing a little bit about, about that, showing people more of what the world looks like in different seasons. Uh, but yeah, we've got big news uh, about uh, how the online works in the game. And specifically, we're talking about some of our, uh, our truly competitive PvP modes in the game. Wicked. Well, let's talk about some of that. We've got some nice gameplay up here. Nice, uh, nice cosy there. Um, good oh, it. it's lovely that car. Actually, I think that's actually one of the cars that you will you will get fairly on uh, early on in the game. And honestly, it's just a blast to drive. And and yeah, I think what we're looking at here right now is um, a pretty newly revamped uh, PvP multiplayer mode okay. um, called Team Adventure. So if you are familiar with uh, with previous Horizon games, as I know you are, absolutely. Um, online adventure has been a has been the way you go uh, and compete with others. Uh, in Horizon games online. Um, and the format has been broadly similar for the last couple of games in that it's all about the open world. It's all pretty seamless, you know, so you don't have to wait in lobbies. You're always driving, you're always in control of your car. And it takes you on a bit of a tour around the world and you'll do races or you'll do games or you'll do a mixture of both depending on what you've chosen. Um, that format is great. What we've done uh, this time is, is a couple of things. One, we have made it like genuinely skill-based, genuinely competitive, you know, so the person uh, who is first will be in first, you know. Skills doesn't augment that anymore. Clean racing doesn't augment that anymore. Okay. So it's a real test of skill um, in, in this kind of competition. And then the second one um, is reflected in the name. It's now called Team Adventure. That's what we're looking at here. Um, so everything about this mode is now team-based. Right. So the points are based on how your teammates are performing just absolutely. as much as about how you're performing as and well, I think, right? I think that's absolutely key, and it's the it's the root of why we've made this this the decision and gone in this direction. Love the that. problem with, with online racing sometimes is that um, if somebody gets out in front, 
they're pretty certain they're going to win. You know, it's kind of a foregone conclusion. Um, I, I, and other people can, you know, become a little bit less engaged in the game. You know, maybe they quit out of the game. Nobody wants that. It's not good for anybody in the game. With team racing, you know, maybe you're not the fastest in the field, but even just battling for second last, you know, you could get the points which, you know, are pivotal for, you, for your team that actually you end up winning as a team. So everybody can make their contribution, kind of regardless of skill. Um, you know, everybody gets to make their contribution and help the team, uh, and now everything is team-based uh, within the, the game. You know, to, to play into that, I love the communication that you've now got, right? You've got these uh, little emotes and communication lines that you can send Absolutely. to your Absolutely, right? quick chat is, is new for the game. Um, it's brilliant in uh, in the shared world, you know, you're just tooling around the world, it's great to, you know, to chat to other people. You get a whole different set of uh, quick chat um, messages that you can equip for a game like this, for a playground game, we're, we're watching what is uh, survivor mode right. Uh, right now. So you have a different set of messages that you can fire off, as I'm sure you'll see some of the players in, in this footage doing, um, just to add uh, a little bit of a gamesmanship, you know, a little bit of a, a fun to the proceedings. But it's important to say as well, like if players for whatever reason aren't motivated by competition or PvP, or they just want to get into the beautiful world you've created, but not have other players in there, they can set up that way, right? Ab absolutely, yeah. And I think, you know, we really think about making Horizon as a game for everyone. You know, we have so many different player types, so different, many different player tastes. And yeah, you're absolutely right. There's some people that say to me, I, you know, I just don't want to play in a shared world. I want to play offline on my own. You can absolutely do that. It's as easy as clicking a button in the pause menu. Um, and, and then you, were, you will play an experience very similar to Forza Horizon 3, you know, so your world will be populated with drive avatars uh, rather than real players. Um, and it's as easy as you know, just pressing that button. That's also great for you and I. You know, if our um, maybe our internet goes down at home, mm -hmm. um, a lot of games they're going to kick you out to the pause menu or to the main menu when that happens. Uh, Horizon 4 deals with it very elegantly, very seamlessly, and just basically transitions you uh, into being uh, in an offline state for as long as your you know your internet is down. All right, good. So flipping back to PvP and competition, right. what other modes have you got in there for those players? So, so you will have. Uh, in fact, you just said to me off stage, you you, uh, you recognise that as infected. Right. It's actually a team-based version of infected. So what we've we've gone and done, racing takes care of itself. Team-based racing, you kind of understand how that's going to work. Uh -huh. um, if you think about our games like Infected and King and Flag Rush. What we really wanted to do was introduce an element of team play, of cooperation, so that it's not just about you know the guy who tags the most uh, and, and infected people. Um, rather, it makes it about the team, so that there's a, you know that teamwork aspect, and the best team is the one that triumphs in the end. We've done that with all the all the modes there. So infected becomes survivor. Um, it's now a round-based game. So one team starts as the survivor, one team starts as the infected. Right from the start, they well one goes at the other team. Yeah, yeah. Um, the twist is that if you are a survivor and you get infected, one of your teammates who's not infected can heal you. Nice. So there's a real back and forth sort of push-pull uh, dynamic to the game, which is totally new. It's incredibly fun. We've done that with each of the games to make sure that you know teams want to work together, they communicate. And I really see that when we launch this game, I think there's going to be people, not everybody, but some people who really go all in on teams. You know, they build their own team, their, their identity, their team badge, the outfits they wear when they compete. Right. Um, and for them, there's a Grandmaster League, you know, which is like the best players in the world. I think a lot of people are going to be striving to get there. I can't wait to see how quickly somebody actually gets up to that skill level. Fantastic. So you've obviously created this amazing world, beautiful, historic Britain. Tell us more about the shareable world and how you can actually share that with other players. Yes, absolutely. So um, when you're when you're driving around um, and you know you haven't opted out, as I as I described, basically we're just matchmaking you with uh, with players. So you're you are seeing other players where previously you'd have seen drive avatars. And I, you know, I think drive avatar technology has served us incredibly well. Um, it does that brilliant thing of injecting personality into your world. How can we get more personality into our into our world? It's by actually having real people. That's that's our genuine belief um, about how that works. And so, and we see this in the studio as we scale up our testing and fill our world uh, with, with real people. Real people do crazy things, they do fun things, they do unexpected things. Um, and even if you only play like in the mindset of a solo player, you just go about your races, you do your PR stunts and what have you, yeah. um, I think they'll add some color, some vibrancy uh, to the world, which just wasn't there before. Fantastic. Ralph, thank you so much for your time as always. Have a great week at Gamescom. And personally, I just wanted to say thank you for putting Edinburgh in the game. My pleasure. A, a dream come true. Thanks, sir. All right. Uh, as you can tell, 
I'm super excited for Forza Horizon 4, surprise, surprise. So surely, there must be a Forza Horizon 4 console bundle, right Larry? Well, there's bundles all right, Graham, but right now I got myself into this thing. This is an, un I had to break out the gloves for this. This is the McLaren Macetta, which is the million dollar cover car for Forza Horizon. I had to wear the gloves for this thing. They're gonna take the keys it's away from me. This thing is unbelievable. There's only 500 made, but it is the cover car for Forza Horizon 4. Chris Bishop is here to join us. Chris from the Forza team, great to see you. Great to see you, Larry. Now, this is an amazing vehicle. Yep, it's What can you tell car. us about this? Oh, they're only making 500 of them. It's the perfect car to be the cover car of Forza Horizon 4, because the handling and the aero is just out of this world. Now, we're here to show off this amazing hardware, but we have Xbox hardware to show we as do. well, right? What do yeah. we have here? So, Happy to announce a Xbox One S, $299, comes with Forza Horizon 4, of course. Uh, one month Game Pass, two weeks of Xbox Live Gold, great value, uh, $299, and it'll be available at launch October 2nd. This is one of the cheapest ways to get this car. Great value. More or less. <laughs> yeah, digitally <laughs> right, correct. But that's yeah. not oh, all. We got more, yeah. What do we have here? So this is the Xbox One X bundle, and includes both Forza Horizon 4 and Forza Motorsport 7. Right. One month Game Pass, two bucks, two weeks of Xbox Live Gold. Both, of course, come with the wireless controller, so two great options for a new Xbox customer. To get yourself into Forza Horizon 4, yeah. which comes out when? October 2nd, and both the bundles will be available at launch. This is fantastic. I know I'm really excited about this game. It was great to see Ralph and Graham together again up on stage. I am so excited for this game. It looks beautiful. I'm going to give this back to you because i got to throw it back to the stage and get back into my car. My car. Chris, thank you so much. All right, now we're going to go back to the stage to wrap things up. Thank you, Larry. It has been an incredible experience here at Gamescom. We introduced Hunt Showdown to the Xbox world. We dug into a brand new Metro ex Exodus experience, and Wanda Russell was here from Undead Labs to tell us about the Daybreak pack for State of Decay 2. We had a visit from Bethesda's Pete Hines, who showed off the new camp system for Fallout 76. Plus, we unveiled the sweet, sweet Battlefield 5 Gold Rush Xbox One X bundle. Oh yes, it's a bundle of bundles. So it's great to have so much to look forward to. From great bundles to new controllers, DLC, and Master Chief Collection coming to Xbox Game Pass. And as long as we're talking about the future, Episode 7 of Inside Xbox will be live from Brace Yourself an undisclosed location. You can unbrace yourself now. <laughs> okay. okay, to celebrate one of the biggest launches of the year, Forza Horizon 4, and I can't wait to find out where they're sending us. I'm definitely coming, right? Right? You have to do it now. Oh, no. oh, we're going. Secret yes. secrets are no fun unless yes. Julia makes you a part of one. Either way, <laughs> I'm in. Now, we've had a ton of fun today, and I'm looking forward to seeing everything Gamescom has to offer. From all of us here in Cologne, Germany, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time on Inside Xbox. Bye! Bye.